Hello, Kevin Davis from BioIT World. We're here to preview the Consumer Genetics Conference, the conference coming up in early October, uh, being produced for the first time this year by BioIT World's parent organization, CHI. And I am delighted to be joined here at Harvard University by Professor David Waits, Professor of Physics. Uh, and perhaps like me, you'll be asking, what is a physics professor, particularly one who specializes in something he fondly calls squishy physics, uh, what, why is someone like this speaking at a consumer genetics office? We'll uh, answer all those questions and more, hopefully, in the next uh, few minutes. Anyway, Dave, great to meet you and welcome. Nice to be here, Kevin. Thank you very much. So, you've got, you run an absolute, it seems like an army of uh, postdocs and grad students here at, at oh, Harvard. I don't Junior. run them, they run me. <laughs> they run you. Tell us just in, over, in overall what your sort of main uh, research focus is. Well, technically, we do what's called soft condensed matter. Um, and I think of it as the uh, study of the physics of the material around us, uh, of what we're made of, of uh, what the common products that we use, uh, trying to understand their properties, trying to control their properties, trying to understand how they relate together. Uh, so this can go from understanding um, consumer products uh, to doing analysis of consumer products to uh, feeding all of that into the biotech world. So let's talk about biotech. How does uh, that interest in microfluidics or squishy physics, how has that sort of found application in the biotech sector? So let me give you a very, very brief sort of history. Um, we study um, soft condensed matter. A good example of that is emulsions. Emulsions are nothing more of drops of one fluid and a second fluid. Mm -hmm. And I saw one of the real founders, one of the, the great people in microfluidics, Steve Quake, give a talk once mm -hmm. where he showed he could make emulsions. He didn't call them emulsions, but he's clearly making emulsions. Mm -hmm. And I realized this is what we do day by day is make emulsions, but we do it by mixing things together. And he was doing it making one drop at a time. And I said, we have to learn how to do that. And so we started really learning how to make emulsions. Uh, our first goal was to make emulsions to make materials, but uh, we soon realized that the uh, drops themselves, because we knew how to manipulate them, we understood how drops behave, we could learn how to manipulate them in these microfluidic channels, and we could use the drops themselves as reactor vessels. Mm -hmm. And we could then make billions, literally billions of reactor vessels, mm -hmm. and do interesting reactions, which are typically bio biological reactions inside the reactor vessels. So this has led to some companies, I guess? Um, we rapidly get to the point where we see tremendous potential, uh, but it's just not the kind of thing, the engineering that's required is not the kind of thing that can be done in an academic group. And so we spawn companies. So various companies have spun off from the group. Right. So you've uh, helped launch Raindance uh, Rain technology, Dance, which yes. uh, people in the genomics field will be familiar with, of course. And more recently, you've partnered with John Boyce, who is the co-founder of the Consumer Genetics Conference, hence the connection. Uh, to form NewBio. Tell us a little bit about NewBio. Uh, NewBio is um, a company that was uh, founded uh, basically on the work that we did in our lab based on concepts that were introduced by Michael Weiner, who's another co-founder, uh, who knew John and introduced me to John. Um, John is the person with the, the, really the vision of where to take it all. Um, the concept is very simple. That is that the drops are so small, the volume per drop is so small, that we can do sequencing by taking advantage of doing the reaction in the drop. We take everything that's currently done essentially on chips, remove that from chips, put them into tiny little volumes. Uh, the assay is slightly different, but now we do everything in, in minute drops. And uh, because the drops are so small, the amount of fluid that's uh, needed is very small, the amount of reagent that needs is very small, and that lowers the cost and in the end, I think, increases the speed. So you introduced this technology publicly um, a couple of years ago when you gave a talk at the Consumer Genetics Conference uh, in Boston uh, and memorably introduced the term the $30 genome. Is that still something that you would stand by? Um, well, um, not yet, but I don't see why not. Um, John uh, and NewBio has hired some uh, brilliant uh, bioinformaticists, and uh, right now they are still increasing the number of drops that they need, but they're getting better and better, and I, assume, I think they will eventually get to the point where it's not outside the uh, uh, range of feasibility to do the whole genome with $30. But I think what's more important, and I think, uh, to be honest, this is uh, uh, John uh, Boyce's uh, brilliant uh, recognition of why it's important, and that is that the basic concept of how we do the sequencing is qualitatively different. 
rather than doing everything in parallel, the way you do with some, on one of these chip machines, rather than doing everything in parallel, here you do it serially. And you can do it serially because you do it fast. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that you don't have to read everything at once. You can read whatever you want. So mm -hmm. this is totally scalable. So if it's $30 for the whole genome, if you only want a few hundred genes, then it's you know, 0.3 cents or 0.03 cents. And so if I'm off by a few orders of magnitude, okay, it's 0.03 cents. Well, I'm off by two orders of magnitude, it's three cents. Hmm. It's still pretty cheap. Right. So you're speaking at the Consumer Genetics Conference, uh, which is October 3rd to the 5th uh, in 2012 in Boston, um, but not primarily to talk about new biotechnology. Tell us a little bit about how uh, your other interest in this technology is uh, well, so, linking to the consumer yeah, genetics I mean, field. So, I mean, consumer genetics means, in my view, it's bringing the benefits of genetics to the consumer. And so with New Bio and John Boyce, we are uh, trying to bring um, sequencing information to make it cheap enough that everybody can afford, really everybody can afford. And so now I ask, well, what other things can we do if we have that kind of information and with the power of the same kind of technology that goes into making uh, new bio work, which is this microfluidic technology, which is making one drop at a time. Well, I told you that we started by working with emulsions. Um, and we've since now, on a different aspect, or a different side of our group, we've learned how to actually make materials, emulsion materials, one drop at a time. So one thing that uh, we can do, and in fact there's a small company that started from our group, it's uh, based in France because it makes cosmetics. Silicon Valley of Cosmetics is near Paris. They're based in Silicon Valley of Cosmetics near Paris. Um, they make, uh, they use microfluidic technology to make emulsions, but they do it one drop at a time. And that's something that people always tell me that you can't do. And that's exactly why I like to do, to do it. And I think we've shown that you can do it successfully. Right. But one of the interesting things, if you're doing it one drop at a time, you can also formulate, by mixing things in different drops, you can formulate very, very personalized cosmetics. So I have this dream. Yeah. What if we take this basic technology that we have and we combine the uh, genetic information that NuBio will produce that's personalized and inexpensive with this ability to mix and formulate cosmetics and really make personalized cosmetics. Why not? That's outstanding. So your technology will be featuring not only in sort of the genotyping aspect but also in the, in the creation of these personalized and, cosmetics. And you know the next uh, generation of the technology that's coming from the lab uh, features in the combination in the, in the intermediate part of that. And that is that uh, the, we think that we can do things like take small numbers of cells from maybe a swab on your cheek or just a little scrape of your skin that doesn't take very many but a few, and actually take individual cells, again working with our microfluidic technology, use that to feed directly into the new bio instrument to do the sequencing. And do you think the roadblock to, towards uh, realizing that vision is on the technology side, or is it still the, the fundamental biology? It's this fundamental biology, but I see that as being uh, advancing at enormous paces. Yeah. And um, my role, as I see it, is to bring the technology to allow those advances to occur. So if you look at a company like New Bio, that John is trying to do, they, they will provide such inexpensive sequencing. Not at the, it's not taking anything away from the tremendous advances coming from all the other companies, which is fantastic. And there's still, there's a huge role for them. But it will make some types of sequencing so cheap and so easily that you know, everybody can have a little bench shop machine and just do it quickly. Mm -hmm. And that, again, is trying to, um, for the scientific researcher, which is what I am in the end, it's trying to make this into something that's just so easy and so simple and so readily available that it's just not a roadblock and that, that we'll be able to use that just in the information to develop the, the science that we need. Dave, just in the last uh, minute or two that we have, tell us about this other interest of yours, which is fascinating. You were just lecturing. It's, the, it's open season uh, here in Harvard, uh, 400 students learning about science and cooking. Tell us about this new... Well, uh, you know, food in the end is squishy materials. <laughs> it's deformable. You chew it, you eat it. Um, and it turns out that, in fact, the modern, modernist cuisine, the really fancy foods that these really modern chefs are producing, are wonderful uh, laboratories, wonderful examples of the squishy physics that I study, the kind of physics that I study. And so we've tried to combine this by essentially teaming with some of the world-class chefs to uh, produce a course where we 
um, interest the students in the cooking, in the wonderful foods, but we uh, also tell them something about the real science behind it. So we can teach science uh, while still maintaining their interest. Right. Excellent. Well, that's a great, uh, a great story to end on, and hopefully one that we'll hear at future consumer genetics conferences. I'm sure there'll be an angle to that. Anyway, uh, that's uh, Dave Waits from Harvard University. Dave is one of the standout speakers at the Consumer Genetics Conference, October 3rd to the 5th at the Seaport Hotel in Boston. Please look online for further information and uh, please come register. We hope to see you there. I'm Kevin Davis of BioIT World. Thanks. Bye-bye.